Hey, welcome everyone to Keys of the Kingdom. I am Tony Pino, and in today's episode, we are going to be talking about Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Now, these two verses are highly debated within the scholarly world, um, especially for those like myself who believe as a follower of Yeshua, a spirit-filled believer in Yeshua through faith. We now are called to follow the laws of the kingdom, which we find those laws given at Sinai. And these laws now are, of course, being written on your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. We see that in Jeremiah 31, verses 30 through 34. And so we are to begin to walk in the Spirit, which means walk in His commandments, because that's what the Spirit will lead us to do. Amen. And of course, Yeshua came down. He not only showed us that He was the true Messiah, but he showed us also that he was the true Messiah through his teachings, that he taught you how to walk in the Torah correctly. He what expanded the Torah. He deepened the Torah. He showed you how to rightly keep the Torah so that you could uh, perform those acts of love to the Father and to one another. And so, yes, when we come into the kingdom, we what continue to walk in those commandments. Now, many people are going to push back on that and say, oh, no, haven't you gone to Ephesians chapter 2? Don't you understand that it talks about that barrier, that dividing wall uh, that is there, and plus these commandments and ordinances that were abolished in his flesh? Well, those are the laws given at Sinai. I mean, he demolished those commandments given at Sinai through his work on the cross. Is that really what happened? Yeah, I don't think so. But we're going to talk more about that here in just a minute. Now, if you look over on the right-hand side here, you can see that there is a box, a subscription box there. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel there, uh, Keys of the Kingdom, if you want to know more about what I teach and understand why we are to still continue as disciples in Yeshua to follow the Torah. There are many videos there on my YouTube channel that will help get you through that. Plus, there is a section on there called A Jew and Gentile Discuss, where me and Rabbi Mitch Chapman, we go through discipleship. We go, we talk about the Torah talk about Yeshua and how to be a disciple together, both a Jew and a Gentile who are uh, faithful followers of Yeshua. Amen. And so, yeah, just hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, pass the videos around. I would greatly appreciate it. And also, just go ahead and leave me a comment. Now, if you see this ticker going by here, you can also see that Keys of the Kingdom is also on Spotify. So there'll be a link in the description box in this video. All right. Let's go ahead now and get into Ephesians chapter 2, mainly verses 14 and 15, but I believe we're going to start with verse 13 first. All right, so here we are in Ephesians chapter 2. All right, we're going to start with verse 13 here. Now we know that Paul, he is mainly talking to the Gentiles here, letting them know that yes, you have been far off from Yahweh. You don't know the ways of Yahweh, but through the work of Yeshua, if you put your faith and trust in him, uh, though you were formerly far off, now you are being brought near through his blood. Amen. And you are coming into the commonwealth of Israel. Remember, the covenants belong to Israel. Israel is the bride. And Gentiles now are becoming grafted in by faith. And so, yes, we are becoming one in Messiah Yeshua. And so he's bringing us together. Now, we've always been able to do that, right? At Sinai, there were Gentiles there. Gentiles have always been able to freely come in and become grafted in to Israel, right? It's been set up that way. Israel was to be a light to the nations. They were to show you salvation by grace through faith because that's what they received out of Egypt there. Uh, but were they doing that? No, no. They had created... Uh, a proselytized system. They have created many ways where they were keeping the Gentiles out. And so through the work of Yeshua, he was keeping true to Torah. He was keeping true to the covenant promises. Amen. And so, yes, he was what? Tearing down many things that the uh, ethnic Israelites had built up to keep the Gentiles out. But in doing so, they were also keeping the relationship they had with the Father out because they were breaking his commandments by doing that. And so not only are we separated from the Father because you aren't walking in covenant faithfulness if you were an Israelite, but Jews who had never really known the Father, who had been worshiping other deities and other gods, they had no clue. So they were, what, 
they were still dead in their sins and separated from the Father. So through the work of Yeshua, he is now, what, bringing the two together, showing them the true way. The Israelites were now going to have to, what, they were going to have to leave a lot of their man-made traditions that violated Torah, that violated their covenant. They would have to lay those down in order to walk with Yeshua and walk after him, right? And then Gentiles coming in, they were going to have to forsake idolatry. They're going to have to forsake the other deities and come in by faith, amen, and be joined to the Israelites and all come together. Now, as we can see here in uh, verse 14 of chapter 2, it says, For he himself is our peace, both the Israelite and the Gentile. Uh, yeah, the Israelite and the Gentile, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. Okay, what is this barrier of dividing wall? Well, some people will say it's the traditions, right? The traditions that Israel had created to keep the Gentile out. Okay, that is one way of looking at it. But I believe it was the work of Yeshua that tore down the dividing wall that was separating man from the Father. Amen. Whether you were an Israelite or a Gentile, all right, the goal of Yeshua was to bring you to the Father. And so what was separating you from the Father? Well, it was the sin of death, right? The death curse. Your sins brought death into your life and kept you separate from Yahweh. Not only that, but the sin of Adam. The sin of Adam brought a curse on everyone. Everyone is born under the curse of Adam, which is the curse of death. And then, of course, you have your own sins, which separated you from Yahweh. So when Yeshua came down and he walked in righteousness, amen, and then he died and was given righteousness because of his work, that righteousness that he has is the righteousness of salvation. It is God's saving power. Amen. And he did that by being faithful and dying on the cross and being raised from the dead. That is his righteousness because he did the work. Amen. And so when it says we are clothed with his righteousness, when you put your faith and trust in him, you now receive salvation. That is his righteousness. You've now been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the father's dear son. Amen. And so, yes, that is the righteousness of Yeshua. It's simul, uh, synonymous with salvation. Okay? And that is not something you can do. No, that's through the work of Yeshua. But just because you're now clothed in the righteousness of Yeshua, does that mean that you are no longer under the law? That you are no longer supposed to follow the covenant? No. That is false. He freed you up so you could walk in righteousness. His righteousness takes away the death curse, gives you eternal life, amen, and brings you into what? A intimate relationship with the Father. You have forgiveness of sin and so forth. But now what? Now you are to what? Do kingdom living. You are to become a disciple of Yeshua. And that means keeping the law. Because it's not the hearers of the law who are justified, but doers of the law who are justified. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Do you know that keeping the Torah means having faith in Yahweh as your one and only Savior? That is obeying the law. Okay, When you put your faith and trust in Yeshua, you are putting your faith and trust in Yahweh. You're obeying the Torah. And he is your only Redeemer. That's part of the Torah. And that you will what? live after your commandments, right? You become part of the bride. You are part of Israel. Israel is the bride. And now you are to do kingdom living, which is keeping the Torah, which is righteousness for you. Okay, that's what it says in Deuteronomy 6, 24 through 25. Just go ahead and look in Ezekiel 14 when it talks about Job, talks about Daniel, and it talks about Noah, righteous men. If that city were to have been destroyed and those men were in it, they themselves would have saved themselves through their righteousness. They had faith in Yahweh, right? As their only God, their only Savior, their only Redeemer, and they followed his commandments. This doesn't mean you walk sinlessly, okay? Within God's commandments, there was always a means of repenting and turning back to him when you, what, broke his laws. And so, no, it's not talking about being sinless. It's talking about walking in obedience, which... Repenting is part of that obedience. 
So in verse 15, in Ephesians 2.15, when it says, By abolishing in his flesh the enmity which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. What is the law of commandments contained in ordinances? Your violations of the law. Okay, because they brought death. And what did Yeshua do? What does his righteousness do? It brings you from death to life. It redeems you from the slavery of sin. Right? You receive eternal life. You receive redemption. You receive his spirit. And when you have his spirit, you will then begin to follow the Torah. So these commandments and ordinances, these decrees that are against you, are your violations that you have done. Okay? And so there are certain decrees. Yes, you've been declared guilty of certain things, right? And the only way you can be set free is faith and trust in Yeshua as your only Savior. And so he abolished them in his flesh, meaning he was obedient unto death. And because he is of the resurrection, that means he, what? He went from death to life. He died and was risen. And so that's what happens to you. You go from death to life. And so he, what, forgives you of your sins and he takes away the power of sin and death in your life. And you have become a new man. And so he makes the two into one new man. The Jew and the Gentile receive the same grace. They receive, they receive the same salvation, the same redemption. He brings the two and they become one. Amen. They become the, what, Israel of God. And so they are what? From the kingdom of Israel. And to do kingdom living, you keep the law. Because what? That is walking in righteousness. So in no way is Ephesians 2, 14 and 15 telling you that the Sinai covenant has ended. No. As a matter of fact, it's talking about the work of Yeshua tearing down the separation that was between you and the Father. And he's bringing you to the Father as a new creation one that is forgiven of your sins but that grace does not give you the freedom to go on sinning to go on breaking yahweh's laws and so we then now begin to walk in the power of the holy spirit keeping the law amen so i hope this was uh, helpful to you in learning how to understand paul's letters better he is very pro torah he never teaches you to go against the torah as a spirit-filled man of god man who is uh, put his faith and trust in Yeshua. Yeshua is our one and only Savior. And in order to do kingdom living and to be conformed to his image by the power of the Holy Spirit, we walk in the Torah. Amen. Going from death to life. So, I hope you are blessed. And until we meet again, Shalom, everyone.